Hello, everybody. It is a pleasure to meet you here in this webinar and to interact with you, interacting not through faces because I don't see anybody, um, but I'm happy that you are that you are with us. And I, I, I'm glad to have the opportunity to present you a little bit and to give you the idea about a PhD in law and regulation. And I'm very excited about this presentation, not only because I'm doing this for the first time, but also because hiring PhD students, it's an amazingly important uh, issue. Yeah, We want to attract very talented and interesting personalities and future researchers in order to give them the opportunity to become uh, researchers and to pursue an academic career. So we are possibly at the starting point of choosing uh, somebody who um, is interested and able and optimistic to pursue legal studies. And that's why I'm, I'm also excited to, to give you a better idea about, uh, about a PhD in law and regulation. My name is Armin Steinbach. I'm a professor at uh, the law department and also the PhD coordinator, meaning that I'm um, the academic uh, a person who is in charge in recruiting and advising um, future PhD uh, researchers, while this decision um, who we hire, who we select, is obviously a decision of our entire department, of our entire law department. And what I would like to do in the next couple uh, of minutes is to lead you um, through a number of um, topics that both give you a better impression of who we are, who the law department is, um, and the kind of PhD studies that you can pursue at the law and regulation department, which is a bit different from the regular uh, HEC PhD track, because we don't have one P uh, track, PhD track, but we have two uh, PhD tracks, and this is due to the um, specificities of, of law and, and legal studies. And then I will also round up my presentation with a few remarks on funding and resources and as well organizational issues on how to apply. Now, who are we? We are the law department, which in the broader uh, um, environment of HEC is a comparatively small department, not the smallest, but a comparatively small department. We are, as you can see here, uh, roughly 12 uh, professors, um, and you generally distinguish between um, uh, tenure faculty and non-tenure faculty. Tenure faculty are those who are um, ordinary research-based uh, professors, um, and you see them here as either assistant, associate, or full professors. And non-tenured faculty uh, professors, so-called affiliate professor, who are engaged very much uh, with the department on a number of, of issues, particular related to teaching and interacting uh, with students. Now, in terms of um, what we do, I mean, we are lawyers, all of us are lawyers. Many of us have a, a interdisciplinary or multidisciplinary background or a multidisciplinary interest, but in general, we are all educated lawyers. And the kind of research we do, the kind of topics we are interested in, and this is the first important thing for you um, when you consider applying to, to pursue a research in our faculty, is there a match? Does it make sense to pursue uh, legal studies at this at this school? Is there a sufficient overlap between your interest and our interest? So um, against this background, what we do, we do research on a very broad uh, range of topics and fields. And this can be, but it's I'm going to mention now a few fields, but they are not uh, exhaustive. Um, but this applies to uh, corporate law, and tax law, it applies to European law and transnational law, international law or fundamental rights. So these are issues that can be either national law focus, yeah, if you talk about corporate law or tax law, or it can be rather European or international focus if you talk about European law, fundamental rights or international law. Yeah, so these are 
is in terms of in terms of um uh, nationality we are both interested in in french based or other uh, national uh, na nation focuses as well as internationally oriented lawyers um probably with a stronger focus on international uh, uh, focus because at the end we want you to enter the job market and to um, get a very good job as a professor at the university and for that to to achieve probably it makes sense to have an international dimension in your in your research um, uh, interest now this is the uh, the nationality focus and then topic wise we be are also very diverse uh, our researchers address issues such as sustainability and corporate social responsibility um, uh, law and economics is a, a field of uh, interdisciplinary uh, approach to, to law, um, artificial intelligence uh, or blockchain, financial regulation, um, and public policy and governance. So you see, I'm, I'm jumping from topic to topic, and it's basically very wide. And this is what I'm going to, uh, um, or what I want to express, the topics that we address are very wide. Often there's an, an economic or financial or corporate dimension to it, yeah, um, because we are teaching in a business school, but this is not a must. Yeah, I mean, it can also be classical um, governance or human rights issues, um, but typically or often our research is somehow linked to, to society and um, to, to business uh, more, more generally. Um, now, this is maybe something that I, by way of introduction, uh, um, would like to have said about our research. I'm not going now to individually to each and every um, uh, professor at our university, but you can easily go to our webpage to scroll around and have a little better idea what what each individually uh, of us um, is doing. Um, in the next step, I would like to guide you now a little bit um, still connected to what we do um, through um, the activities that we do. I mean, we are obviously we are uh, um, offering uh, law studies. Um, we offer two different masters in our um, uh, department. On more specific, we run three full time uh, programs and in LLM and international management and law, a major in international taxation and a major in European business law. This is the interaction with master students, which does not necessarily, uh, is very, very relevant for you, but it gives you an idea that we are, uh, in terms of teaching, um, also uh, quite active. And then what we try to do, and to, for which is important for you, because you would become an, 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 a pillar and an, an important element of, of this, is our environment, our research environment. And this research environment, um, is among others is taking place in uh, research seminars and we are running three different seminars in our uh, department a law and regulation seminar which addresses um, classical or traditional law uh, topics and uh, as a general idea we invite external speakers to come to HEC on campus or online to present and then have a discussion with them. So this is our way of interacting with external uh, researchers. So one is on law and regulation, a more traditional focus. Um, a second one is on law and economics, which I just mentioned, which is interdisciplinary and which is the seminar that we run with other departments, that we run with the economics department, with the finance department, and with the accounting department. So it's an exercise of bringing different departments together, bringing the researchers from different departments together and interact on issues that have a law and economics and finance connection. And thirdly, we run a law society and artificial intelligence seminar um, jointly with uh, um, Polytechnique and other uh, universities um, around Paris, which, as the name says, deals with a number of issues revolving around artificial intelligence and digitization and which is also very successfully in attracting external speakers um, to talk about this issue. And our re our PhD students would then obviously be um, part um, of um, of these seminars. I'm I'm seeing questions are popping up up there, but I'm not opening that yet. Um, if you if you agree, I would first pursue with my with my presentation, and then then address um, uh, address the the um, 
um, the questions individually. Um, now, um, let me now tell you a little bit, and this is important. I mean, now I gave you a little bit of framework. Where would you go? Who are the people who are you going to meet? Who are, who, are, who are, will be the supervisor or the supervisors um, who will supervise and assist you? I mean, this is um, the, the part of the, my presentation that I just dealt with. I'm now going into what are the tracks, the PhD tracks that you could pursue. And we have a short track and we have a long track. The short track is three years and the long track is five years. And the general, why do we have two tracks? Um, given that the regular track at HEC is five years and why we offer also a three years track. This is because in law, three years, if you compare it with other universities, is the more common duration of a PhD studies because lawyers normally they are already quite old. They have a quite substantial uh, education when they enter their PhD studies and they, they don't take uh, uh, degrees anymore um, to finalize and accomplish their PhD studies, but they focus rather directly on on their uh, uh, the, the research topic of their PhD. So let me talk about first this fast track. I would say the the three years uh, 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 track, which in year one um, it would have some coursework um, uh, included. Yeah, I mean, so it's not like in other universities where you have not a single course to take. You just write a book, you submit the book, and you have your PhD. Mm -hmm. Now we have a minimum. Of courses, this is also required by, by French law. Um, however, what we do not have compared to the five years is a degree. So you don't have to, uh, to pursue a degree and therefore you have a lot of freedom to attend courses of um, 100 hours. 100 hours is the legal minimum that you would have to, to pursue and you are very free in choosing the kind of topics that you would like to do. And you can then choose from the PhD courses which are um, offered by the various other departments in the in the PhD uh, uh, framework, or you can choose from the master courses. I just mentioned the three full time uh, uh, degrees that we we offer. You could also pick and choose from from those. So it's it's a it's a light uh, requirement. I would say we don't have strict uh, barriers in terms of the achievements that you have in order to um, to get uh, to pass these one hundred course. And generally, it's it's attending. And, and passing these uh, 100 hours of courses. But we are flexible also in, in dealing with it on an individual basis and to see whether research seminars would also suffice. Because we want to have this as a light requirement because in the three years PhD, you should focus quickly on the research that you're pursuing. Um, and, and the idea is that throughout year one to three, you would start doing your research. You should ideally have already an idea when you apply about your research. I'm coming put to that later. And um, um, you would then pursue your research in interaction both with the department, with your individual supervisor, with other colleagues on, on the campus, with uh, PhD students in, in the wider Paris area, for example. And as from uh, year two, you would also have your budget, as I will say later, to attend conference. So the inter the idea is also that you interact as a future researcher uh, with the with the outside world, with the outside academic uh, world. And um, this three years uh, track would then um, uh, be accomplished in year three with your defense of of the thesis, and you would then enter the academic job market. So this is the fast short track. Now let me turn to the to the long track. Um, which is the standard at HEC, the five years um, um, uh, PhD, which is different to the extent that it starts with a research master uh, in management and science. So and in this research master, you are educated um, uh, on a very basic but also sophisticated level to be, become familiar with methodological research tools. Yeah, and you will have... You will attend a research class that you are um, that that offer you um, uh, and and uh, methodological approaches that go beyond purely legal um, uh, methodological approaches. You will you will be taught, for example, in in the economics of organization, uh, in general research methods, or you will have an introduction to econometrics. You will have an introduction to the philosophy of science. So you will be very broadly educated in in research methodologies. And this will take um, two years. And after these two years, you have a degree. 
you have a research master in management uh, and science, and um, um, it comes with a with a quite substantially higher uh, uh, course load um, that you need to to uh, attend, and. Um, um, it also comes with the participation in academic training workshops and reading groups. So you are then integrated in the regular five years re uh, HEC uh, PhD, which offers um, many other activities just besides the uh, uh, attendance of, of courses. And also during these two, first two years, you take the courses, you do, um, you start doing um, your your research. You would ideally, in the uh, summer of the year one, you would come up with the summer paper, which outlines uh, the your your research uh, agenda, and which then feeds into in year two into a research thesis and a very concrete idea of of what you are going to do. So you here have you have with this five year track on the long track, you have more time to develop your idea what you're going to do in your final thesis because you're first educated in in uh, methodologies which also should then give you an, a better idea of what you actually want to do so you have more time in in uh, um, developing your research ideas um, and then as from year three to five it is comparable to the uh, short track so if, year three to five you focus on your research you attend conferences and you finally in year five and you defend your thesis and you enter uh, the job market. So these are the two um, uh, tracks and um, I'm happy to elaborate on these if there are later um, questions, I I'm sure there will be. Um, and I'm going to tell you now a little bit more, um, but I can ha have this slide uh, short because I mentioned some of this information already um, on the long term. Um, on the five years uh, track, as I said, it differs from the three years track in that it has this mandatorily integrated degree, this research master um, requiring coursework for the first two years and um, heavy research training. And um, this is structured in a way that you have some um, basic core courses. Yeah, some of them I've already mentioned, organization theory, economics of organization, um, et cetera. You see this um, as a foundation uh, on this slide, e.g. microeconomics and organization, um, organization theory. And um, you will also have some uh, teaching and method and tools, research methods, introduction to econometrics, introduction to philosophy of science. So you have this mandatory course, core courses, part and element of the research master. And then you have space for choosing electives. So uh, electives basically are organized such that each department offers a number of courses, the strategy department, the economics department, finance department, marketing department, accounting department. So each of them offers so certain um, discipline specific uh, courses. And you would then be able to choose um, um, uh, um, from these, from these uh, electives, yeah. So you have this core course part, and you have um, the um, electives part, and um, yes. Yeah, so let me, I could say more on this, but I, I, I stop here to elaborate on this in case um, maybe maybe later. Um, let me now turn to an important point uh, on our view of what we expect from you. And this gives you an idea on which are the criteria that we apply when selecting an applicant. Um, in law, you see many lawyers uh, around the world who have a PhD or a doctorate or a doctorate. A PhD, doctorate, doctorate, I, I use it um, interchangeably. And who are not academics, who are not in academia, who are not professors. Yeah, it's it's very common in some countries that practicing lawyers have a have a PhD or a doctorat, and well, this is culture. I mean, this is legal culture. This this is a habit in many legal cultures, and there are many universities who make this their their business case to uh, offer doctorats, doctorates, and PhDs for people who do not necessarily want or who do not have um, the potential to enter the academic market we are different hc is different yeah and this applies to all 
um, uh, PhD degrees and also to, to law degree. We want to hire a future academic. We want to hire a future professor. We want somebody who really strives, or who's really driven by research motivation. We don't want somebody who wants a title to have a job better salary on the practical uh, lawyer job market. We don't want somebody, let me also be clear on this, who has side jobs in law firms, who does not know which of the two he likes better. He wants to do the doctorate and also this work time as a lawyer, practicing lawyer. We don't, we don't want that. We want somebody who focuses purely and 100% on on the PhD uh, uh, in in law, and I think, and I will talk about this later. We offer you also the economic environment to do this without the need to have other side jobs. Yeah, and and I also want to say that HEC has been very successful in the past in bringing our PhDs into uh, into future professorships. Yeah, eighty eight percent of our PhD students end up in the academic job market, 88%. And I think this is a very successful rate. And we want to maintain this high uh, successful rate. And how do we maintain this? How can we make sure that it is really um, um, academics that we are educating here with our PhD in law? We are very selective. And while you know many law departments and universities in France, Germany, England, who have, uh, who have uh, dozens of PhD students, we only hire in the law department, we only hire one, typically one maximum in exceptional cases two, but annually only one uh, per year. Yeah, in order to make sure that we select only those from whom we think that person has academic potential. And that person shows commitment to academia, he or she um, really wants to move uh, into academia. So only one uh, student uh, per year with a strong research um, orientation, not with a practical uh, 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 practicing focus of law. It's it's about research. All right. That said, let me turn now, and um, well, just for you to know, we have until uh, uh, two thirty with the seminar. But I'm 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 finishing soon my presentation, and then we have enough time. Uh, to interact, and if you want me to to elaborate on some things a bit more, I can. I'm ha I'm happy to do that. Um, let me now to funding and and resources. As I said, um, we want we are very selective. We want to uh, to hire a future professor. As I initially said, we are quite flexible in terms of topics. Yeah, I mean, if you have a topic where you think, oh, I'm not sure if this is really business school relevant, it's not really business, don't mind. I mean, this is, we we are evaluating um, um, uh, applications on basis of the, we assess them on the basis of, of, of the merits, on the basis of how uh, sustainable or how stable and and viable a research uh, topic is, how, how big is the likelihood that this is an important contribution uh, to research. So um, we are flexible on the topical part, and we are less flexible on the selection selection criteria with the with the research focus. Now, funding and resources. So these are uh, some technical information that I would like to give you. You would enjoy a living stipend of twenty five euros per year, up to three years. So either through the um, three years track. Um, or through the other uh, uh, track, which this is obviously a matter of of uh, uh, of uh, taste for me is is a, it's a it's a very good uh, scholarship twenty five euros per year. You would also enjoy a one hundred percent tuition fee waiver, so you wouldn't have to pay for uh, for the school, and you would have these twenty five thousand uh, euros. Um, in addition, as I said initially. We want you to interact, to become an interactive uh, researcher, interacting with the outside academic world, not being uh, stuck on an HEC campus, which is already outside of Paris. Um, uh, no, we want you to interact, to become an interactive uh, and also traveling uh, researcher and visiting conferences and seminars uh, abroad or uh, in the country. Is, it's a very typical um, exercise um, of, of a future academic. So you would have a um, uh, conference visits um, 
um, budget in year two of 1,500 and then annually uh, throughout the other years of, of 3,000, which gives you flexibility, yeah, which gives you uh, the pos potential to, or the possibility to attend conferences um, of the kind that you, you like. Um, um, we also give academic visiting positions um, in terms of uh, additional living stipends or or road trip uh, um, um, tickets, and uh, we pay visa fees. If I'm well informed, but these are issues that the um, HEC um, uh, um, program managers can answer much better um, than me. And there's also generally the opportunity to be offered research project funding. So if you have, for example, a research project for which you need money because you run a laboratory um, experiments or so, or you need access to a database, um, or you need uh, specific books that you are not able to um, find on campus, but you need them very urgently and permanently, then there are other sources of fundings that can be made available uh, to you if you are in need. And then um, in terms of interacting within the school, there's always also the opportunity to become a teaching assistant or a research assistant. Um, and as the name says, as a teaching assistant, you would typically assist a professor in, in, uh, in running a course. And as a research assistant, you could be hired on a project based by a professor to, to, um, to, to run his or her uh, research. Um, how it is to live on, on the campus? Um, as I said, AGC, it's a, you see it behind me, the, the most modern building. It's a little bit outside of Paris, which has, I'm, I'm honest to say that, pros and cons. Yeah, And uh, um, to start with the cons, it's, it's a little bit outside. I mean, you're not going to party uh, if you uh, exit HEC campus. There are not no bars or big restaurants where you could could celebrate uh, the remaining years of, of your youth. Um, no, you would have to uh, travel a little bit if you go into Paris. But the pros is that you have a big campus, you have a community, you have an interactive community, you have a community um, which is often on campus. Um, many of the professors come to campus um, regularly. Many students live here on, on, on campus. So you have a really nice campus and it's a couple of pictures you see here. Uh, on on the on the screen, you would also be offered on house uh, on campus housing. I think this can also be very convenient for for many of you, uh, for many of you. So you would have um, for a reasonable price. Um, I'm not exactly how much, but this is also something we could later answer. Um, for a reasonable price, access to um, to housing on on campus, and then we have a wide range of facilities, as you know, from other um, big universities, medical services, libraries. Um, restaurants, not the kind of restaurants where you go partying until uh, 2 a.m. in the morning, but uh, you can go there and have have nice uh, dinners. And then we have a very uh, vibrant student community on all levels, on the master levels, MBA levels, uh, etc., cetera, um, which run various activities and which also enjoy our sports facilities. Um, and then obviously we have a number of PhD uh, facilities um, a dedicated uh, PhD, sorry, um, PhD office. I'm just trying to move the picture of myself, but I'm not able to do so so easily. Um, so you have a dedicated student office and uh, a PhD lounge. So if I'm if I'm if I understand well, you would share uh, your your offices with other PhD students, but you would have your own uh, desk. And um, but maybe I'm wrong. I mean, this is some, maybe you, there are even individual uh, uh, offices. This is something somebody else could, um, um, Jacqueline, maybe you can um, tell better than me. Um, then there are PhD student associations. You would have access to research uh, database. And obviously, as a, a business school, you would also have access to companies. Yeah, there are many companies um, seeking collaborations and interactions with um, HEC and you would have uh, you can exploit this for your research uh, uh, topics and uh, seek these co collaborations and to get proprietary data sets or engage in, in, in field work. Um, let me now um, lastly find to uh, 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 turn to how to apply to give you some um, procedural um, uh, issues. 
And here I should mention again this peculiar difference between the five years track and the three years uh, track. As I said, clearly we want outstanding students. We want students with a very high achievement throughout their, their uh, studies. We want students from whose CVs we can see and from whose plans we can see this is somebody who has potential to become an academic. I mentioned the very strong fo our focus on, on pursuing and selecting somebody with an, with an academic uh, career or an academic future. So for the, for the five years track, you would typically have a bachelor in law um, um, or, uh, or, an, or an addition or you would have a minimum exposure to legal studies. So five years track, which is by its nature a track for some, that would be for somebody who does not want to do 100% law. Yeah, I mean, the five years track integrates this master with this multidisciplinary. Yeah, let me, let me put it very easy. If you do the five years track, it's more for somebody who's really interested to, to integrate into law some of um, non-legal uh, methodology or non-legal issues. Yeah, and therefore, in order to pursue the five years track, you do not you. It's not a must that you have a master in law. You can have a bachelor in law, or in exceptional cases, in exceptional cases, um, we would let a minimum exposure to legal studies suffice. So, if it, this is somebody who has a different non-legal background, who has run a number of of uh, law courses, and who wants to pursue a, a PhD in law, however, with a strong non-law uh, dimension, we would also consider somebody without a bachelor degree. But in general, this would be an exception. In general, you would have at least um, a bachelor in law. While if you pursue the three years track, which is more similar to the kind of PhD that you pursue at other universities as well, you would have at least a master degree. You would have a bachelor and a master degree in law. There may be exceptions to this, but um, um, as a general rule, um, um, you would have a, a master degree in law to pursue the three years track. Because as I said, initially, the three years track is often, I mean, the three years track means you don't have to do all the coursework, you don't have to do all the additional multidisciplinary um, issues besides the 100 hours of courses in which you're free uh, to choose. But the three years track is more law uh, dominated than the five years track, I would say. Obviously, we want you to have excellent academic records, as mentioned, and obviously, um, a high proficiency in English is required. And um, I repeat myself by reading out and uh, hinting you at the second bar here of, of the slide, the second um, uh, half of, of the slide. And we want somebody with a clear ambition for an academic career. Um, therefore, you would need a carefully crafted personal statement of purpose from which we can really understand, okay, this is why you want to pursue an academic career. And we want a recent and strong letters of recommendation from your professors. This is for us an indicator of the quality that we see from your CV. Obviously, we look first at your CV and then look at recommendation letters. And these recommendations letters serve to support what you have written uh, in, your, in your CV and what we can retrieve from the CV. Um, prior training in research is, is good to have, but not a must have. I mean, somebody who has a, a clear idea of the kind of research topic that you pursue and who has already done research on this gives that application, obviously, some merits because we can assess whether this is a solid and viable research project, but it's not a must. I mean, we don't expect you to have a have uh, already done uh, research on this. Many of you might come freshly from, from a master degree, so you have done your master thesis before, and you have not gone beyond that master thesis, which is totally understandable and totally um, um, normal. And then you should offer, obviously, some evidence of fit with our faculty. I mentioned the topics that we deal with, but as I said initially, we are flexible. Since we have a very broad um, uh, uh, range of topics, we are very flexible. Um, on this. Let me now come to my last slide and then we can enter Q and A's. Um, so how to apply, you need a personal statement. Um, you need to submit your, your uh, CV, the proof of your university's uh, studies, degree, transcript, etc., to academic uh, recommendations. Uh, you may offer supporting uh, documents such as research papers. You need to have passed um, a TOEFL test and you need to pay this low amount, my view, um, considerable low amount 
of, of 60 uh, euros. So we then have two intakes, two rounds of applications. The first one um, uh, running um, from, if I understand correctly, from 16th so, or uh, January 5th. Um, and after this round, we will conduct interviews with those uh, selected and decide by end of February. And we will have a second round um, with an opening on, on January 9 and a deadline April 9 and a decision by the end of May. And this was my presentation. Um, I think oh yeah, here is one more slide to sum up, um, uh, fast summing up why we think we are a great school. So not only, in, I was talking now so much that I and we expect from you, we are also obviously glad if you would choose uh, HEC as the place, the venue for your research and why you should do so. It's mentioned here on this slide. We are Europe's number one business school. Uh, uh, confirmed year by year by the Financial Times ranking. So we are number one in Europe among business schools. Yeah, this is, I think, um, uh, uh, due to the high reputation, the high quality um, that is done both in research and teaching at this school. We offer you a top level stimulating environment. I mentioned the various professors at the law department, but there are many other departments with very interesting scholars and personalities. And you would last but not least benefit from numerous forms um, of support. I thank you all very much. Um, as I said, I'm, I'm happy that many of you joined this presentation. And as I said, I am excited. We are excited about uh, hiring our first uh, PhD student. Um, we look forward to your um, application. We encourage you to apply. And um, yeah, let me leave it with this. Uh, thank you very much and uh, uh, take care. <laughs>